the area in the Northland. Um, today, we are doing our weekly interview with Everyone Needs a Guy. And today, we have Dane Moss, the marketing boss. And he's going to go through, if you're moving your business to the Kansas City area or um, you're just trying to grow in the Kansas City market, how you need to be doing that. And also, if you're just marketing in general, how you're staying in front of people, different stuff like that, we're going to go through it. I'm going to start this off with letting Dane tell a little bit about Moss Marketing Group and how he got started. So, Dane, introduce yourself. Thank you for having me on. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. And the marketing space I got into was kind of different than most. I didn't go to college for it. I, it wasn't uh, some found love I had for, for my whole life. It was... I started off in the automotive space and saw a huge void in the the marketing industry for Kansas City and the Midwest as a whole. And it was just very, I don't know, under undervalued, I think, probably okay. for business owners that marketing is such a huge piece of how a business grows. And I, I really feel like it's the backbone of what creates big companies. It creates a brand. It, it does. And I, I think that the marketing companies, I sat on the other side of the table for a really long time and had marketing companies come to me and all they really cared about was trying to get me in a big contract and get checks out of us. And we spent a lot, a lot of money on marketing. And that is one factor that can drive business. That is a, a direct correlation to ROI to increase and build brand and all that. And I just never felt like I had somebody on my side. And, and I think that is a huge side when you're talking about marketing, because I had a guy on here last week that um, when since we're doing this, we're seeing I'm seeing a lot of business owners. And he was telling me they were through their eighth marketing company. Mm -hmm. And he's only been there five, six years. And that's pretty common everywhere. And it's people partner you. I look as a partnership. Yeah. And business owners partner with some marketing agency. And it's I really hate to use the term marketing agency. But it's a partner with someone that should have the their best interest in work of what they do. So when I started this, I wanted to build something that actually bridged that communication gap because there was always a huge problem with that. And we had these marketing companies that we were spending fifteen, twenty thousand dollars a month with, and you would call them and they're like, Yeah, we can get you on a call here in two and a half weeks. I'm like, What? <laughs> so I wanted to build something that really helped business owners and I think marketing is actually super simple. In the way, in my head, the way marketing works is simple. Okay, it's tell me more. It's exposure equals traffic equals sales. And people lack getting exposure. Correct. So, Everybody wants that immediate lead, and they're not worried about... I, like, you see that all the time where people are getting leads. And we had this issue when I was in the insurance spaces. We'd get a ton of leads, and then we'd call them and say, hey, we're with this. And they'd be like... I've never heard of you. Yeah. And if you don't have that exposure piece and that brand piece, when you're calling people, they're like, I, I don't know who you are. And then they Google you and you better be able to pop up. Yeah. And it's, it's one of those things that the, the funnel process of marketing is similar. across. It's the same across every business that we work with. And I started off super heavy in marketing for automotive dealerships, which as we branched out, we figured out if you can do automotive, all other marketing is easy. Like they're dealing with larger budgets. They're dealing with the cost per acquisition is higher. Their sale price is higher. Just so many things about the automotive space. And it's also dealers are fighting a forefront that everyone thinks are terrible people out the gate. Correct. So it's like we figured that side out. So we started going into everything else. And I was like, wow, this marketing is way easier. Like we can do this. We can do this. But the funnel process is I've sat with people. And when they drive straight to greed to the bottom, they're normally not people we work with. We want to build a foundation for a business. And the foundation is built on exposure, getting people to know who you are. Don't try to sell people every time you're in front of them. That's why we hit it off so well when we first yeah. talked. It was you wanted to educate people in the space. Yeah, and that's my entire goal. That's why I bring people on here every single week because I do believe everyone needs somebody in their corner. Whether you're moving to the Kansas City area, you're selling your house in this area, you're heck you're trying to put in new ac or you're doing any of this stuff you're looking to grow your brand you need somebody in your corner that you can trust and it's i mean you hit on it communication is huge one of the first conversations that we had was if there's something that you don't like tell me yeah it's 
I think it's funny how many people, and I'm just talking population in general, people want somebody to fix something, but that person never knows the problem. Correct. And it's like, we dealt with it all the time in the car space that I would call someone and I'm like, hey, how was your car buying experience, blah, blah, blah. I'd see them a year later in the, the grocery store and they'd be like, I'm pissed. Like, they'd be all mad about buying a car. I'm like, what's up? I'm like, two weeks after that, my battery died. And I had to go put a new battery in it. I'm like, did you ever call us? And they're like, no, yeah. what would you have done? I would put a new battery in it. <laughs> like, what do you mean? And they're like, well, I didn't know that. I'm like, what? How's, how the fuck am I supposed to know that if you never even called me? Correct. So it's just like one of those things that the communication side is huge. Like everyone we work with, we don't run contracts. We, we run it to where anything that you need, you should be texting someone here or calling yeah. someone. And it's, I feel that's how it should be. If I have a real estate agent, if I don't tell you what I want in a house, how are you going to find the house that I want? What are we going to do? Just shoot in the dark all day? Like, it, it, yeah. <laughs> it, and it's, you see people that get like, that's a communication factor where people will say, Hey, I want this, but then you're talking to them and they don't like, they're like, oh, we're showing them different houses that kind of fit what they want. But it's like, Hey, I know you're not going to want to, I know you don't want this style of house. Why are we looking at it? Yeah. And that's understanding people's wants and needs. Correct. And I think that is a huge lever that we do have that my brother and I had a very good understanding of that from the automotive space moving into this was understanding when we're selling people, understanding when we're working with people, the difference between a want and a need that there's some people that drive after content as just a self ego. They just want a huge push for themselves just to get some views to make themselves feel better. Correct. Then there's other people like, but the actual need and that's a want. Then the actual need is that you need your business to pull more revenue to where it's like, there's different paths to both of those. And sometimes we have to pull people from one to the other saying like, we have businesses that we've went in that the the owner or the main person that wants to be the face isn't the person that performs the best on camera. Isn't the person that Instagram wants to see. Like, and I watch that with accounts that like they may have somebody in that location that they're like, and I see it from the outside in. I'm like, that's the superstar. Correct. That's the person we need to focus on. If you really want to drive business and you want to grow this to something, that's who we're focusing on. So how do you handle business owners egos in that situation? Uh, cause it, I mean, that's, that's a big yeah, thing. I yeah. was talking with the, my real estate coach the other day and he goes a, a lot of what drives business owners in general is they do have a big ego. I mean, I do, yeah. I do. it, it's part of it. How do you get them uh, to understand what's, what's the best Avenue for them? A lot of times if you really set and you start sitting with them with the, the analytics of everything, show them the data that's, that's proven from it. I, I don't go to the table and go after that conversation with no proof. Yeah. So I look at everything that we do as the writings on the wall, the proof is in the pudding, whatever you want to go after. Like when it is written out in front of you, it's really hard to say no to it. That yeah. most of the time when I see it and I can see how somebody performs, I can see how authentic they are. There's some people that like just get nervous in front of camera. I used to be that person. Like I now do it so much that it's, I really don't like I'll jump in front of a camera any time in the day. I talk on the on my phone coming in every day, like on Instagram stories. But that is something that has been a progression. And when you have that, now I see that the numbers when they go up, people want to see a certain thing when they're following someone. Like if they're following Dylan Fry, the real estate guy, and then you have some assistant, Tim, that starts for you, that's terrible on camera, and you put two reels up and one does 5,000 in views and one does 1,000, and that's consistent across the board. Guess what? Tim doesn't probably need to be in front of the camera. No, we need waste. to we need to put him in front, get him better over time. But that's not what's driving your business currently. So that's sometimes you just have to look at those and just look at what the numbers tell you, and run with what the data is telling you, and chase that. Yeah. So people marketing in the Kansas City area, you talked about there was a void in this space. What are things that you think every business should be doing? I. I think the marketing space has shifted a lot in the last five years and it's shifting very quickly and people aren't adapting fast enough. So social media is the largest lever that a business can pull and it is downplayed so much by the older generations that own businesses currently. They're still chasing this SEO train 
that is just burning money everywhere. But the thing is, like, the biggest players in the room are figuring it out right now. Yeah. And they're pulling that SEO money back. They don't know where to put it yet, but they're starting to pull back. There's SEO companies closing down everywhere. And it's like, when I look at marketing, I don't look at KC marketing agencies. When I started this, there wasn't a KC marketing agency like, oh, my God, I want to be like them. There's not a big player in the room here. That's where I saw the void. There's Gary Vee with Vayner Media out of New York. There's Chamber Media out of Utah. I watch the marketing agencies that really run the country, that run monster yeah. com- I don't want to say monster companies because there is a uh, marketing firm, South KC, that does just high-end like commercial accounts. But starting with them, it's 100000 plus a month. Oh. So I don't want to be that person that abandons where I came from. I want to be something so big that we can help with the $100,000 a month account and we can help with the $3,000 a month account that we still have a voice for everyone. And we give people like there wasn't an avenue for small business owners in Kansas City to step in with content, to step in with social management, to step in with all these pieces that we've offered towards just a – I don't know. The, the space here is I, I go into companies all the time that pay for marketing and it's it baffles me of what they're paying for. Yeah. And they, you don't really know what they're paying for. That's the biggest problem right there is if you pay for marketing, everyone should know you pay for marketing, period. Like I feel that is a simple. I should put that on a T-shirt, on walls <laughs> everywhere. Like if you pay for marketing, everyone should know you pay for marketing. Yeah. If you're paying $6,000 a month for some SEO shit that you have no earthly idea what it's doing, and it's, you go talk to someone, you, like, there's people I search, I've, like, looked up AdWords, I, like, go through everything, and I sit down, they're like, yeah, we pay six grand. I'm like, I couldn't figure out that you spent money, and I do this for a living. And that's a, that's a difficult thing, because so many people are sold a bag of goods. Mm-hmm. I worked with a big company that a lot of their fo- focus was SEO. Hey, we're going to give you marketing dollars for this SEO. When it wasn't, like, I, I opted out of it. I was like, no, I'm not spending money on this stuff, because there's nowhere that I, I am seeing that return. And mm-hmm. it's not helping in my general market. There's You're never going to... In the market that I was in, we were in a town of 5,000 people. Like, you, it doesn't matter what they search here. I'm the yeah. only person in town. Exactly. <laughs> like, I don't, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And, uh, and it's just funny how all these businesses focus so much on it. And then when you ask for the results or you ask to talk to somebody, hey, can we change this? They're like, well, this is what our ad does. This is, th- we just have this generic ad. This is what we offer. This is the plan that we offer. Where working with you guys, I come in and I'm like, hey, I've noticed this. Mm-hmm. And it's it's one of those things where we just talk through it. And then it's like, hey, uh, we can make this better, look better visually by changing these few things. And you're like, yeah, let's do it. And that's not something that you get everywhere. Yeah. Like other places are like, you say, hey, I don't really like how this looks. And they're like, well. That's how it is. That's how we do it. And the in today's world, the most valuable thing, and this is more valuable than a dollar, I will say in today's world, is attention span. If you can capture people's attention span, you can win marketing. And the only way to capture people's attention span is with good content. Correct. So something that we stepped into that made something a lot different was we hold all of our content creators on staff. Other marketing agencies sub all of it out. They run them as 1099 contractors. They're all subbed out. They, they do all their own freelance work. And then if they have a project, they sell out individual projects. To where it's, I didn't agree with that business model. Because Why not? I believe on a larger scale that you should have content people in that can be everywhere on your clock. So it's not like you ever come in to try to do one of these. And I'm like, hey, I don't have a content guy. You can't do it. Yeah. When we're running hundreds of accounts and we're doing all this, it's I have to be able to rely on those people as being employees in house to have that stuff done. And it's I, I can't have somebody saying like, hey, yeah, I booked this like so I can't be there. And I know companies that do that. And it's like that doesn't look that doesn't seem like a long, long play for me because I view everything as a long play of where we're going to be and what that progression looks like. 
yeah. with that progression, our, all of our pieces that have to be put in place have to have that content there. And then right. we acquire that attention span. And when you're acquiring people's attention span, you're making a brand. Yeah. And so to go further on that, how often do you think people should be putting up content? That's a, that's a tough one. It's because it's always changing. And depending on the platform you're on, that TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn and YouTube, everything runs differently. I will say starting off, do whatever you can be most consistent at. If you can have three videos a week all the time, and I'm going to say, like, when people get into content, this is the other big misconception, is just throwing shit against the wall. Like, I, I see it from marketing people. They're like, well, I post four times a day, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, everything you post is shit. Like, nobody wants to see that. <laughs> like, in this space, everything is noise. So there's good noise and bad noise. Uh, a country singer makes noise, and we pay to go watch a concert. And then a trash truck makes noise, but no one pays to go listen to a trash truck. Correct. So everything is noise in the market space. It's just what are you going to put out there that people want to see? So I would rather somebody put three videos out in a week that somebody wants to see instead of four times a day on shit that nobody wants to see. Yeah, you have to add value. <laughs> if you're not adding value to anybody, then what are you there for? <laughs> I see that a lot in the real estate space. There is a lot of agents that will take a listing, throw it in the MLS, and then never touch it again. Mm -hmm. And they'll underprice it so that they get multiple offers, and they'll present the offers, let the client pick. That's why so many people you know, over this last few years have been doing for sale by owner, because they don't see any value in it. A hundred percent. Where when I'm talking to clients, uh, I'm coming in with, hey, I'm doing like – just a, a different things. I, I change it depending on what the client needs. That's coming back to what are their wants and what are their needs. Like I have a client that we, I hired a couple guys. We took them out there. We helped them clean out the house. I brought in the dumpster and paying for the cleanup crew, also paying for the professional photos. And I have all this expense in this account and it comes down to now I have to sell the account. So now what am I going to do? I'm going to go put more money into target marketing and I'm going to put more money into making sure that this house sells because that's the only way I get a return on it. Mm -hmm. And there's so many agents out there that don't do that. And I think it's, I think there's so many similarities between the automotive space and the housing space of in the car space. Dealers do the same shit where they go buy a car they do some shitty ass photos of it. They put it on their website. They pay for Cars Guru, Auto Trader, Cars.com, whatever it is. And then they sit and wait. Like, I'm an aggressive moving forward person. I do not wait on anything. Like, it is, we are all in control of our own destiny of where we're going to go. We're in the driver's seat. How fast do you want to drive? Correct. And it's like, houses are the same way. And it's, when you have a house and you go above and beyond to market that house to put it in front of people, marketing works the same way on selling a house as it does a car, as it sells anything. The more exposure you get, the more traffic you're going to get, which leads to a sale. 1,000%. As simple as it comes. And an uh, agent was like, well, I don't know why I can't move that house. Like, I've seen tons of agents that have went through a – I was with a buddy yesterday that was showing me a house for sale, and he's like, I don't know why this hasn't sold. He shows me the pictures of it, and they are the worst photos I've seen of a house. They couldn't spend the – I don't know, 150, 200 on some decent photos. Like that's one place I don't, we don't compete is on the photos. Like we we're not in that price point. So we don't compete on real estate photos. There's a lot of companies out there that do it for a price point and do a great job. So it's, we just let them do a great job at what they do. Correct. We help with real estate videos. We do Matterport. We do all these. I know somebody that sold a house for $600,000 up North that was off a Matterport walkthrough from buyers in Arizona. It's because that person went above and beyond. They said the people out of Arizona said the only houses we were looking at were ones with virtual walk walkthroughs. Yeah. So it's like, does that, are you going to catch a buyer every single time for that? No, but it's being disciplined on what should be done on every house. And that's why you have value. And it goes back to exposure and that brand and you have to create a brand that's one thing i it doesn't matter whether it's a 
$50,000 property, a $500,000 property, a million dollar property. I am all, like, you're not getting anything less than professional photos. Yeah. Because one, I don't want to put it out there that it, it's like, hey, I'm going to take photos on my camera. Mm -hmm. uh, now, there's agents that do that out there and to each their own. But my big thing is my brand and educating people on how fast can one misconception that I've seen in a lot in the real estate side is people are like, oh, well, houses are selling in a day or two anyways. Mm. They are if they've got some good marketing behind them or they're underpriced. There's yeah. two things that go to that. You either you market the heck out of it and you get enough buyer's eyes on it before it ever even hits the market. Then you're going to go pretty fast. Like we just had a house to where um, I stuck in pre MLS. Nobody thought we'd have a ton of views. We hit the market. We had 15 or 20 views in the first day, ended up with five offers. And we're yeah. going to close on Tuesday and we haven't even had it listed a month. I mean, and there's those, there's those type of situations where we laid everything out. I told them, Hey, this is what you need to do. Helped them get rid of some stuff. And it was super easy, but nobody sees all of that stuff that goes into it unless you're educating your people on, Hey, this is what I'm doing. For and, and that's where you hit the nail on the head and like on the education, like I think that goes back into marketing that, in the grand scheme of a business working, the sale is what makes business. That is what trades dollars. Trading of dollars is what makes the economy go round. And it's like, I, I don't think profit is a bad word by any means. Like, I think people should be profitable. I think businesses should be profitable. I think people should make money. Like, the whole, that makes the system work. But it's when you start running that and you have a value issue, the education piece is where most people don't attack marketing correctly. So when we sit, when we're talking about three great pieces of content in a week, somebody's probably going to be listening to this. I have people that listen to our podcast all the time and I will give them a set outline of what to do. And I tell them not what to, I tell them, do not do this. Like I want a big deal put across. It's like, do not do this. Do not try to sell people every single video you put up. And guess what? There's going to be people that in the next two weeks watch this and then they're going to go up and they're going to, every video they put up, they're trying to sell something. Yeah. If you're trying to sell me every single time I see you, every single time I see your face, I don't trust you. No. So, and that goes, I don't trust Sirius XM radio because anytime I've ever got a phone call from them, they've been trying to sell me. Like, and I think that goes for everyone, but it's like, Think about somebody that is trying to sell you every single time you see them. Do you want to go have beers or hang out with that person? Uh, no. So why would I buy from that person? What, and why am I going to tie myself to that person in a situation where if you're talking about marketing, you're with them. A If, if you don't have a great relationship with your marketing company, pick a different marketing company. But you should, you're talking to them all the time. Exactly. And it's if I'm – we've had conversations that are two hours long that we've never talked about selling shit. Like there's no benefit. There's no money trading for that. It's like, I want you to do the best that you can do in your business. The only thing that does for us is benefit us, gives us another success story. Same thing in real estate. If you do the best job for a client and you're not trying to sell them the whole time, I've walked, if you go into a house and there's a foundation problem and you point out every issue that's in that house and they want that house, you were the honest person for them. And so many people are so, I'm going to use the word greedy, and they're so desperate for a sale all the time that they miss out on 90% of actual sales. I think that's, that goes back again to the exposure side of it because people that, people that are, get into that situation where they are, hey, I need this sale, I need this, I need this, I need this, it's because they haven't built any, any base. Yeah. And when you're running a business, you have to build a base. Otherwise, you're constantly going to be in that business to where you are churning and burning and you're constantly fighting for that next lead, fighting for that next for that next deal. And it's it's exhausting. That's why so many small businesses fail. Oh, for sure. And I feel small businesses fail because when I said the marketing space has changed, it's because people have became smarter. People can read through the lines now. People can know when you're coming after them for money. Yeah. And it's, they can. And those gimmicky ass car commercials do not work at all anymore. 
I promise you, they don't work. The only ones that work is like possibly like the dime down sh stuff that takes place. And that's just because people have such bad credit that if they can get a car, they're going to take it. Correct. But it's like realistically, people that can buy can read through the lines on if you're trying to sell them all the time. Towards putting stuff out there that just, if you go after businesses educating people, and I don't care if you do HVAC, if you do whatever it is that you do, assume that no one knows what you do and no one understands what you do. I put marketing tips up all the time. I put stuff out there. I, I run a podcast every week. I do all these things to give people as much information as they can possibly get. Yeah. But it's, I have people come to us all the time. They're not uneducated when they come to us. I want an educated buyer when they get to me. They say, hey, I want to do X, Y, Z. We've been watching this. Like when you came to us, you were very educated on what you wanted. Correct. I've done a ton of research on exactly how I wanted it to be illustrated. Yeah, and then we said we sat down, we put a roadmap together, said, hey, here's what an overall marketing strategy looks like. This is what drives traffic, and, or this is what increases exposure. This is what's going to drive traffic. This is what's going to lead to sales. And then we start building that foundation from the ground up, and we're consistent with it. It's always out there. People aren't missing it. And when you put all those pieces in place, I mean, it's the perfect recipe for successful businesses. Yeah. Like it is. You, you find any – and the reason that I feel like I have a, a great understanding of this at this point is because we work with so many business owners all the time. I've got to get on like – I'm on like hyperdrive where I get to watch like the best business owners. I get to watch people that aren't very good. I get to watch a whole bunch of it. And I see where people like chase all their cost all the time and it runs them into this like barrel of like things just not working. They're so like – they're jumping over dollars for pennies all day. Now watch other people that are just so driven on like this high level like of progression that's like they're just spending and spending and spending and they're making more and more and more. And it's just like feeding the beast of what they're building. And it's like I watch those people, I'm like, damn, that's that's what we gotta do. But it's just like <laughs> it's just different ways of looking at it. And you always have to be able to take a step back and view what you are doing from the outside so how does i do it about every week to two weeks that i look at all of our social platforms from the outside in do we seem like we're trying to be too salesy do we seem like we're trying to push this too much what what is it what is somebody that doesn't know us how are they viewing this yeah what does our representation look like so that's just something that i think that all business owners need to take a step back if you go look at the stuff that you've put up over the last month and you gave people no benefit to follow you why would you follow you? I completely agree with that. And I think that's one of the things that's helped this platform grow is, and, and as it's growing, um, is because I'm not, again, I'm obviously we're here for the exposure piece and eventually it leads to stuff. But the biggest thing is educating people on, I, I do a lot of coaching. That's one thing that I absolutely love. I coach T-ball, I coach, um, I'm coaching T-ball this year. It's not my favorite, <laughs> but I coach football. I coach basketball. I just love helping other people become their best selves and helping business owners is huge. Like that's, that's my favorite thing around it is I go to, before I come here every Thursday, I go to a business meeting, which is just business owners and at the ACA business club. And I just talk to everybody and that's where I pick up most of the people to come here is because just learning about other people's stories, you see how much people go through and what drives their business. And then you invest in that and bring them in here and you're like, hey, let's talk about this, get it out there. And then people see how much that content helps. And I think that's one thing that a lot of people lack is they don't understand how much the content would make their life so much easier. And I don't think people really understand the true scale. Like, I think scale is hard to, for most people to wrap their mind around. It was hard for me to wrap my mind around when I first started. When I was like thinking of automotive wise, I'm like, I need all these salespeople. They're going to be calling all the time. They're going to be doing this and this. And like, that's just the, the mentality that I had before. And as I've started pr progressing and we've, we've grown larger and we've grown a following, like we've grown an Instagram following at almost 12,000 people which isn't anything like astronomical, but it's also like I do an Instagram story driving in every day. And by noon, I've reached 1,500 to 2,000 people with a minute long video of me speaking. That's an audience. 
That's huge. That cost me nothing. Yeah. That, that is just strictly a minute of my time when I drive in in the morning to put out thoughts of what we may have going on today, of if I have a, a couple websites that are available to buy, if I have something that somebody needs to know, like if I can give somebody a tip for the day, whatever it is. Like, whatever's on my mind when I drive in, I hit it. And it's like, how many salespeople would I have to hire to reach 1,500, 2,000 people in a day? A lot. Yeah. And then, okay, so say I hired that many salespeople to do cold calls. How many of them are going to get a minute of someone's time? That's, I mean, that's huge. So is. you start looking at scale of that. Now think about when it scales to having 100,000. Like you get to where a computer and what you can do with social, manpower is not feasible to do it that way. Correct. You can't scale it that high. And the thing is, like you talked about that, with 2,000 people, you're getting 2,000 people, but you're getting same 2,000 people every day, and you can't call the same person every day. So you have to constantly try to come up with new stuff. And if you're getting out there in front of people, when they have an opportunity to where they need you, they're going to come to you. Or they're at least going to ask your opinion. Mm -hmm. And that comes back to, are you a salesy guy? Because if you... Or as soon as they pick up the phone and call you and you're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to charge you this much, this much, this much, and you instantly go into the sale, you may lose them at that point because then your content's not genuine. Yeah. Where anytime somebody calls me, I had a guy call me the other day and said, hey, I need some advice. I'm buying this house from a buddy. And I said, well, hey, I can handle it, but I don't think you really need it. Uh, go to the title company. Here's, here's your situation. Yeah. And walked him through it. A lot of that is comes from the education piece. I'm educating a lot of people. He's coming to me from, I, there's no other way to around it. He's coming to me because he's seeing me all the time and he respects my advice. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to give it to him. I'm not in it just to make every single dollar out there. Well, that's, I live and die by good things happen to good people. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of people we've helped that have burned us. There's a lot of things I've done that. It's a karma fin- business. It is. And I've done a lot of things that financially probably some big investors or something out there like the do company stuff would probably tell me it was stupid. I might not disagree with them now, but it's like, I felt that it was the right thing to do at the time. So it's just doing the right thing all the time and truly helping people that I never kick out a price to anyone that when they call me, like I don't try to sell them. I'm like, when can we sit down? I need to know something about your business. What are your goals? What are your objectives? Like that's how we scored so much of our work. What I think is funny is same thing happened to me when I was on the other side of the table. People would come in with some huge, long presentation to present us. And they would, like, get myself. they get all the managers at the store. We'd sit in there and put it up on the big TV, and we'd go through this whole presentation. I'm like, these people do not know our business model whatsoever. Like, they didn't hit on anything that, like, we actually need to do right now. But it's like they thought that, like, this Legion style just, like, down your throat to the sales side was like what everyone's looking for. So, and then I, at the end of it, you get a this is one ninety nine ninety nine. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's you get like this price tag, and then it's that part isn't the price tag isn't a huge part if you're actually getting people's needs handled. Correct. So most of the time, I don't sweat on the price tag. I know we run at a premium price in Kansas City, but it's like we run a higher level than everyone around us. So I, we demanded premium price. I know that. Well, and I think the the point I was trying to hit on there is that it's the same price. They're walking in yep. with that presentation to every single business that they're talking to as opposed to building a custom. I mean, with 100 plus companies we work with currently, there's not a single one that runs the same as another one. Yeah. And it's like we build out, build out custom marketing strategies to every single company we work with. The similarities are very of how we work a funnel and how we work someone down funnel and to get that exposure, to get the traffic, to work to sale, like that is very similar. But how we get there looks different. That the way you run a company to the way a restaurant that we work with runs a company, to the way a car wash that we have, to the way a rest or a car dealership, it's all different. It should so, be. It, and it, it is, but it's cost for market share is different. How many people are playing in the space? Like there's a lot of these different factors that people don't look at like, why do I have to spend that much in ad spend? Well, we've looked in the area and every other company that's 
that you're competing against is also paying for ads in this area to where you're now competing against someone. Your price now goes up. Like that is something that your exposure level, the algorithms in the, on Facebook and things like that are now going to adjust those. We go to someone where no one's competing against it. Like I love the small town companies that call us because I'm like game on market shares free damn near. Like when they increase just like organically what they do. And then we throw some ads behind them. It's like, it's seeing you every day. It's shoot fish in a barrel, dude. It's so easy, but it's like, everyone wants to own Kansas city. Guess what? You don't have to own Kansas city. Like everyone fights for these same companies that sit down around here. We don't have any companies down here. All of our shit sits around the outskirts of Kansas city, but it's like, those are the people that the marketing companies in Kansas city don't mess with. Yeah. Those are the people that don't want to talk to the marketing companies that sit down here. So it's like, that's where I look is just that overall structure of what you do is like paying attention to your areas, paying attention to all that. And it's, I don't find it crazy complex. I try to keep it as simple as possible. I, I custom tailor it to every company we work with. I don't come in with some huge presentation before I've talked to you. Like I could come in and you say, Hey, like, there could be something completely different that your goals and goals and objectives are. Yeah. And if I come in on this lane and you're over here, I won't close that a hundred percent of the time because you didn't figure out what the needs are. Makes sense. So but, when you're working with clients, I, I know that I, I see this um, just to myself when it comes to content, you're doing a ton of it. How do you, do you help people stay away from burnout? Cause you see it all the time. Um, I will say we help with that a lot because we help come up with ideas to where I, I cannot do what I do by myself. I can, yeah. I will say, I probably, I don't even know if I have a job here really anymore. I've kind of taken everything off my plate and I have a lot of people that surround me that are a thousand times better at what they do than I am. So my content creators, my project managers, our graphic designers, everyone in house is so skilled at what they do. And I will tell you when I grab just half of them and I throw them around a table to come up with ideas, what happens is magic. So it's, I definitely see that. Like if I was trying to come up with stuff to post all the time for us, I'd be way burnt out. Yeah. But it's, I don't come up with 99% of what's going up. It's, they're coming up with ideas. They come to me and I'm just like, yep, let's roll. Let's roll. Like, let's roll. Like there's a reason they've all been placed where they're at. And so that helps a lot with the burnout of companies where I think that is a lot of people's huge fears right out the gate. They're like, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. Correct. So it's, that's what we help with that. We just started a podcast for another client yesterday and he's like, I have no idea what to call it. I have no, like, he was like, we should probably wait a while, blah, blah. I was like, no, let's shoot it for Wednesday. We'll be there. I'm like, we'll come up with a name. We'll have all that handle. We'll be ready to roll. I'm like, we'll get sound people on. We'll get all of it done. He's like, seriously? I was like, yeah, we'll come up with ideas for you guys. Talk about everything. But it's like, that's what, that's what I want for people though. Yeah. Is that experience of how that operated. It makes it easy. And then he'll tell 10 other people that may be fearful of starting something because no one else wanted to help them through the process. And it's like, I'll help anyone through the process. Like when they're working with us, I don't nickel and dime people for things. It's like, I want your company to be successful. Because we are stacking wins everywhere for companies, and we stack a, a ton of wins. It is like we have a fire, and his gas is being thrown on from everywhere right now. But yeah. this company is taken off, and he's told five people. This company's taken off. She's told ten people. And it's just like wildfire everywhere. But that's just taking care of people. And it happens in real estate. It happens in the car business. Like I live and die by referrals and the, the name representation that you have. So it's like when you build a great name in real estate – Five years from now, you're not going to have to work even close to as hard as half the people out there. Correct. Because everyone that you've dealt with, they're like, this is the dude. Dude took, he took That's... great care of me. He did exactly what he said he was going to do. The process was easy. You took a fearful process. You made it easy. And I think that is one reason why I swear by you guys. And I tell everybody, like I said, I go to a meeting right before this every week with a bunch of business owners. And I, I swear by it every single time because there was that fear side. I knew what I wanted to do coming into this year. Uh, and I, just from our 
uh, the people that we hang around, Eamon, which mm -hmm. is the lender that I use most frequently. I knew he has a relationship with your dad, and I was like, hey, I want to get in front of them because I know what I want to do, but I don't know how to do it. Yeah. And coming in here with in that initial meeting, it was it like five minutes into it, I was like, okay, this is going to be super easy. I don't have to spend all this money on all this other equipment and do, do this other stuff that I was going to do. And we, we talked about it a little bit earlier before we got on where companies will go spend all this money on equipment that they don't know how to use. I was going to be that person until I met with you guys and you were like, hey, we can do this, this, and this. This is how we're going to illustrate it. You're going to have to do this. We And getting it out there to every platform. And just constantly staying on top of it, it makes it really easy when I can send a message to you guys and say, hey, I'm going to be in the studio this day. Or, hey, let's go shoot this neighborhood. And then I just say, hey, when's your schedule? Okay, we got it. And then all I have to worry about is make sure that I'm prepared for that moment. And then and, and I think it's good. I think a lot of people uh, discount the learning curve that comes with content creation. It is. Like, I understand a lot about it. I can go out and I can get on a camera and I can edit and stuff. But I have a crew of people that, like I said, are, I mean, light years ahead of me that do an amazing job at cutting reels, putting full form video out, doing all these different things where, but that's what they work on all the time. Correct. I don't want them to be experts at something else. I want them to be an expert at content. And it's like nobody in Kansas City has given those people an outlet to go make a profession of that. And it's like, because of that, people think that like, oh, I'm going to go buy a camera. I'm going to start a podcast. And I'm going to, I'm going to throw up some cameras and I'll edit so it all. So much harder than you think it is. You know how many people I know that have like shot two podcasts that have all this film that have never done anything with it? They're like, dude, I can't figure out how to edit it. I paid for Premiere Pro. When I first downloaded Premiere Pro like five years ago, it might as well have been written in Chinese. I like opened it up. I was like, oh my God. I was like... When I first decided I was doing this, I was literally on YouTube watching editing videos and spending nine hours a day trying to figure out how to edit this video. And I got one posted and I was like, I don't know how I'm going to be able to do this multiple times a week. Yeah. And you look at the time that goes into it. Like somebody that's high performing in any space does not have time to sit there and edit out their own videos. No. Look at Alex Hermosi that puts out the amount of content he does. I think he spends seventy five to eighty thousand dollars a month on just his content for Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Yeah. So it's like you take all these guys that are monster players in I'm talking the social space, they've built personal brands, brands that they run, all this with content and see what they're they're spending on it. But it's they're running volume, they're they're consistent, they don't miss anything, it's always handled, but it's like if you went to Alex Ramosi and be like, he could edit twenty four hours a day. And wouldn't be able to touch half of his content that goes out. No. Like, scale doesn't work. Correct. It, it goes back to, that's where your focus should be on your people. Like, if you, if you really want to increase your uh, profitability is focus on this stuff. And then once it gets there, then hire the person that's going to take some stuff off your plate. But you have to get that ball moving mm -hmm. and it moving very quickly because it does. Yep. Like I think that's the, one of the big misconceptions is how fast when you focus on content and you're constantly getting out there, how fast it starts to turn over and you get busy. And then you have to stay on top of it. And I think that's where some people, if you don't have somebody that makes it really easy for you, fall off. Yeah. And I think that there's a lot of people also that have this like old school mentality that's like, I'm just, they've done it the same way for 20 or 30 years and they found success in it, but they're like fully capped out right here all the time of that they could actually probably work half the amount and not kill themselves all the time. If they started putting content out, letting content work for itself, that what you don't realize is like, I have a video that's still hitting on Instagram from like two months ago. And it's like, I think it just cleared a million views, but I get on Instagram all the time. Like mornings I'll wake up and it'll be like, like every morning I wake up, it's like a hundred plus likes or whatever. Like we're hundred out on the notifications every morning, but it's from reels just all over because we post reels all day. Like we post two reels every single day, but we have the content. It's high level. It's going up. We have one goes up in the morning, one goes up in the afternoon every single day. So it's like, when you have that happening and you have that just constantly working in the background that it just starts to generate business. And it's like, 
I feel like this old school mentality of like these this old generation that's out there in the real estate space that they make they make decent money, but they're in the office every single day, working leads from nine to five, doing the same thing. Like when does that end? Never. Because that's why you hear all the time where um, real estate agents are 70, 80 years old. Yeah. And it's like they, they have no break on it, but they may make 300 or 400 grand a year and they're not willing to sacrifice a little bit of it to change their lives. And it's like they're so scared to spend money that they're going to stay in that cage until they die. And it's like yeah. it's a sad thing to look at, but it's I look at I can be out golfing and people are still watching my Instagram videos. People are still watching my stuff on YouTube. People are still watching our stuff on Facebook. If we're not working on Saturday and Sunday, guess what? Videos are still being viewed. People are still watching our stuff. People are still ending up in our funnel. Correct. And it's like those real estate agents that aren't doing anything, they're working seven days a week. And if they are sick in the hospital or they go out and golf or something, work's turned off. Like they literally flipped a switch. Like, I just don't understand that. I don't know if it's a different way of looking at things, but it's like, I want as much out there all the time working for me, and it doesn't always have to be people. Well, and you're missing out on half of your, like, this is one reason that I dove into it. You're missing out on half of your clientele because a lot of people work nights. You're yeah. not getting hold of them during the day. Mm -hmm. Like, well, who are you contacting throughout the day that, when these people work nights? Are they? And a lot of times when they're on those night shifts, what are they doing in the break room? Yeah. They're watching YouTube. They're watching all these things. You have to be in the space if you want to grow, especially in real estate. If you're in anything, I, I think it translates to every single business. Um, if you've got a product to offer and you've got some education that you can offer around it, get in front of a camera, do that stuff, record. And I, the way I got better at it was literally every time I was doing anything, I was just recording it. I have so much content in my phone that's n will never see the light of day just because i just hit the record button yeah and that's i started doing it too i i filmed probably i don't know 200 videos in my truck before i've ever posted one and still even when i started posting it was still whack because and it's gotten a lot better yeah but it's just one of those things you have to i tell people get uncomfortable live in the uncomfortable you if you live uncomfortable now it'll make you comfortable in five years and if anybody watching this can take away from that, get uncomfortable now. It'll make you comfortable in five years. I completely uh, agree. One thousand percent. So. So awesome. Well, I appreciate you coming on uh, because I do believe if you're starting a business, everyone does need a, a marketing pe person that they can trust. And there's not very many of them in this in this business. Um, if this is your first time on the channel, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and also uh, follow or not. Hit that subscribe button so that you'll get notifications of future videos that we're posting. That way you can see all the different businesses that are in the Kansas City area. Hopefully you grab something out of this that can help you um, and help make your life easier as you make that transition to the Kansas City area. Or if you're here and you're looking at selling, that's my big thing. Dane, I really appreciate you coming, out, uh, coming on here and helping the viewers understand the marketing aspect of everything a little bit better. Um, before we go, what is your... I know you talked a little bit about it, but what is your elevator pitch to everybody? If, they're, if they've got a business, why should they choose Moss Marketing Group? Uh, I, normally, I don't really have an elevator pitch. Like, it's one of those things that if, people have to believe in it for me to even want to sell them. Like, so it's one of those deals that I, I don't go after I mean, chasing all this work. If people want to grow, and they, if you have a business and you want to grow your business and you're open-minded and – that is, I think, one of the big parts, too, is people have to be open-minded. They have to be wanting growth. Correct. Then I, I tell people, reach out, contact me. Let's have a conversation. I want to get. I want to know your business before I'm going to pitch you anything. So I don't really have a – I think most people have this salesy elevator type deal, which, I mean, I, I don't have. I, I dress in shorts and a T-shirt or jeans and, a, jeans and cowboy boots all the time. So it's I, I don't dress in a suit or anything trying to – cross over someone it's this is what you're going to get all the time we drive pickup trucks here it's uh, a little bit different vibe and it's just I, I want people to have somebody in their corner that isn't just after them for money we want to help businesses grow and I want to understand what we can do to help them scale and really change I feel like it changes their life it changes everybody that works for them so and I, I think I'm going to go with that 
I completely agree. And I think that is, if nothing else, if somebody's looking at wants that growth in their business, come check out the environment yeah. because it is next level and it's awesome to be around it. And it will, even if you choose not to, it will make you want to grow your business just because you see the energy that these people in here bring. Yeah. And so. like I said before, they're the ones that make everything go around. I just, uh, I'm just here now. I feel like so. Awesome. They, uh, thank you for having me on. I, I greatly appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate you coming out. Again, this is Dylan Fry, the real estate guy. If this is your first time on the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and then also hit that uh, little bell so you'll get notifications of our future interviews so that we can make everything in the Kansas City area go right for you, um, get more people in front of you that can help your transition to the Kansas City area a lot easier. Thank you guys again.